Hey, what's going on everyone? IS Studios here for another Cinema 4D tutorial. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use the GPU render in Cinema 4D. Uh, it's built in, so you don't need to download anything else. Um, it's just built into Cinema 4D, R19 or later. Uh, and it's called Pro Render. And it actually uses the graphics card to render. So you don't need a really powerful CPU, you just need a decent graphics card even. Okay, so um, the thing that I like about Pro Render is that you can see your preview real time. So before I talk anymore, let's just go ahead and look at how to do how to enable Pro Render. So go up to your render settings. Now renderer, you want to set it to Pro Render. And uh, well, that's that's it for now. There's lots of settings here that we will look at in a bit, but um, I don't want to bore you with that yet. So first, we're gonna head into our camera here, and um, we're gonna go ahead and just start Pro Render in Mark. It's really that easy. Um, and if you have an alternate viewport that you want to do your pro render in, you just want to go to pro render and use pro render view. Use as pro render view. Uh, and then you can just start pro render. Or you can start it through here. Anyway, we're going to start it. So first what you would see is that you would see that compiling shaders. Now depending on how many materials you have, how advanced they are, your computer, that may take longer or shorter time, but that really depends on your computer. So, you can see it's rendering here. But the cool thing is if I move around, it will update the scene right away and that is what's awesome now obviously it is noisy at first and it does take time to refine um, I know that in a few seconds you can get an image like this which looks really good right but um, then what ends up happening is to get a actually perfectly clean image it's gonna take like an hour maybe uh, I know I had a scene that I let it render for like an hour and it still wasn't a fully clean image, so that's something to just keep in mind. Um, so, that looks pretty good. Um, now, we're going to look at how you'd actually make a scene like this. Uh, by the way, if you're interested, I'm using a GTX 1070, overclocked, about 100 megahertz. Uh, anyway, that's 100 megahertz on the core, like 400 on the clock, or on the memory. So, that's just in case you're curious. In case you're curious, pronounce that wrong. Okay, so... Um, few things. Uh, first of all, we're going to look at how to make a PBR material. So PBR means physically based. So um, obviously in real life, everything is reflected. Everything you see is a reflection of an object. So, um, and what, what Cinema 4D, when you make a normal material and you go into the, the color channel, the color is just really faking a 100% rough reflection. Um, so for realism, the best way to do it is to obviously use real reflect bleh, real reflections. Now this does take longer to render because obviously everything is reflective. But um, to make a new PBR material, you can just create new PBR material, and then I'll make a new PBR material. And all you really need to know here is that it's all based off the reflectance channel. So um, you can see here the default diffuse. This is where you want to put your texture. Okay, like so if I've got some floor, which I actually use for this, not this scene, but a different one. Um, you would open that up, and then you would go ahead and just open up your wood. You would open up your wood texture here, right? And if you want to just do like a solid color, you can make the color right here. Um, and then you know, of course, if you wanted to, you could just um, let me set that back to white. If you could, you if you wanted to, you could just um, use a gradient or whatever. It works just like anything else. This is just your color channel right here, layer color. Um, you don't you can't don't change this uh, the default reflection that's kind of like the default specular um, with a Fresnel pet dialectic Fresnel um, that's kind of like specular uh, if, you, if you disable that like just remove the reflection it'll just be non-reflective now in the preview here here's something else you'll notice it looks really no freaking noisy um, and that's just because the preview doesn't render a lot of um, doesn't do a lot with the noise, it just kind of leaves it like this, so this won't look like this in your final render, I promise. Um, and, yeah, that's pretty much that for PBR materials. Um, so that's how you'd make that, your PBR materials. Um, the next thing is lighting. You cannot use, uh, well, there's a few things you can't use. A floor. You cannot use a floor. A floor does absolutely nothing in Pro Render. Like, I'll, here, I'll bring up the floor, and I'll just render it. See, Pro Render does. Oh, I'll, I'll apply something for. I'll apply a metal material. No, I'll make a new, make a new PBR material, and I'll apply it to the floor. As you can see, floor does absolutely nothing. So that's something you're gonna have to be aware of. That the floors do absolutely nothing. 
The next thing is for lighting, you are going to probably use a PBR light, please. You'll get the best results. Um, so you can obviously make a PBR light by just going to, um, oh, it's lagging. There we go. Um, may lag when adding in a PBR light. It does that sometimes for me. But anyway, PBR light, you can just go up to your lights, hold, drag onto the PBR light. And PBR light is just a normal light, <clears throat> normal area light with um, some good settings like um, uh, the shadows have been tweaked. I think it's like square fall off. The shadows have um, inverse square fall off. Yeah, inverse square fall off, uh, physically accurate. So just a few settings changed to make it a bit more accurate. And here's something else you'll notice as well, is that um, like if as you make the light bigger, it gets stronger, right? And that doesn't do that in Cinema 4D usually. That's just um, once again PBR doing its work. So yeah, um, that's that PBR lights, and that's pretty much everything. Now let's look at the render settings. So. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory for the names, but I'll go through them anyway. So preview, um, this is like when you just render right here. You go and do preview, right? This is this is what they think you mean by preview, right? This is preview, and um, obviously uh, the settings are pretty similar in both of them, but I'll explain the preview first. So mode, global illumination, you always want to use that. Um, you can use direct illumination without shadows or ambient occlusion mode. I'll show you what that looks like. That just renders the ambient occlusion. Uh, direct illumination with sh without shadows. That's just really unrealistic without any shadows. I mean, I guess if you really want really quick render times, but eh, I just use global illumination because hey, it's it's much better, right? Uh, the other thing, uh, ray depth. Yep, that's basically how many bounces of um, GI you're gonna want so you just turn it up all the way it makes almost no render time difference at least for me in my experience and anti-aliasing samples that's obviously you know what you expect right anti-aliasing that's just a quality slider so you can really use even one and for preview obviously one or two will be more than enough um, for just the preview but uh, in your final render you're gonna want to use like probably four anyway uh, the next thing, radiance clamp. This is kind of if you have dead pixels on your monitor, or also called hot pixels, where um, this will kind of deal with those so that it doesn't. Um, uh, it deals with those. Um, kind of clamps the radiance. I don't fully understand it, um, but I don't really use it and either, so it's not really important in my opinion. But okay, progressive rendering. So this is like um, this is whenever I push render, right? or start pre-rendered mark. This is how many iterations it's going to run through. So each iteration just kind of progressively refines the image. So stop condition after a certain amount of iterations, after a time limit, limit and never. So um, iteration count, if I set this to like, I'll set it to like 10, and I render, you can see here, it's going to render 10 iterations, and, and it'll just stop there. You can see it's not rendering anymore. It just stops at 10 iterations. So, um, I have this set at like 100. You can turn this up as much as you want. Or you can really, if you want to, just set it to never. And this thing, iteration, you can see here, pro render iteration samples. Um, and we'll see it pass 100. And it just keeps refining the image. It doesn't care. It'll just keep refining the image, which is nice as well, to, want, to some extent, right? And um, you may want to set the iteration count, though, limit. I usually do 100 because that usually produces a pretty clean image. Anyway. Preview resolution. Um, this is like if I set this like this is just this is obviously full resolution right here, but when you when you pan around it it will it'll like you can see it'll be black in between some of the pixels. That's kind of what that does. So that's like if we set that to like one half, then it kind of requires that uh, now you won't get a you won't get feedback as quickly or maybe you will, but you can see here now it's, it's less black. If we set this to like one sixteenth, it kind of is really distorted. Anyway. If you set it up to one, um, that actually that gets us a pretty clean image. It's pretty laggy though. I should point out it's really laggy when going around. So that's something to be mindful of. So their default um, one eighth works pretty well. Anyway, the next one uh, default texture resolution. This is the texture resolution. Obviously, um, it'll use more video memory if you have this bigger. But um, 128 is good for preview and also texture bit depth. 
uh, and the offline as well is automatically set to um, 256. Okay, so uh, in the preview as well, um, let's see here, texture resolution. Nope, that's it here. That's it for the preview. Oh, general as well. We'll look at this. Um, default light. We'll just don't tweak these. They're fine as they are. Devices. Um, if you want to, so you can use GPU um, and CPU. You can use GPU or CPU for offline rendering and um, like GPU rendering and, or I mean, sorry, for your preview and your final render, you can use your CPU or your GPU. Just don't do your G CPU. It's so slow. If you have a GPU, I mean, I guess if you want to, if you don't have a very powerful graphics card and you still want to use Pro Render, you can totally use um, a CPU. But the, this just kind of says, you know, if you want to use for preview, maybe we want to use our CPU um, and our GPU, whatever, right? Or if we want to use our CPU and GPU for offline. I don't know if they both can render at the same time. I'm not sure. I haven't tested that. I don't think so. But that's that. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, now let's go to the offline and. That's pretty much just um, <clears throat> Firefly filter. That's uh, I think that's related to the Radiance clamp. I'm not sure though. Um, I'm not sure what the Firefly filter does. I think it's something to do with um, just hot pixels as well. Uh, and the next thing is uh, yeah, this everything here is the same. Anti-aliasing, de ray depth filter. Um, well, this is your anti-aliasing filter, obviously. But um, here we'll stop rendering actually. And uh, the next thing, okay, level of detail, right? You can turn that down in the um, in the project settings as well. Uh, I don't know how to get to the project settings, but I know there's project settings, and you can change the level of detail there as well. So you can change the level of detail of the render. Um, and display tag LOD, um, use display tag LOD. That's kind of I think you can tag objects with LOD or um, level of detail. But anyway. Um, you shouldn't worry too much about level of detail if you know enough about that. You, if you know what level of detail is, you probably know what you're doing, and you don't need me to explain about all of this. Uh, and this progressive rendering, um, so this is just when I want the final render to start. So the final render would be like if I open up the picture viewer, right? Um, I, I've set it to um, never end, and I've set it, to, or iteration count limit, um, 2000 for 2048 because I want a lot of I want this to be a fine image a good image right um, and the iteration interval that's how often it updates you can see it's not updating constantly um, next iteration up ne bleh, next iteration update after 10 iterations 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 and you'll see when it updates boom it'll fix it so or it'll it'll keep refining it so the iteration interval is just like uh, how long between updates? So obviously it's going through iterations every second, but it only updates the image every ten iterations, or however many you specify right here. Or in time interval, refresh mode you can also every second, or every like ten seconds you want it to refresh or whatever, right? Bucket rendering. Uh, this is kind of like if you want. Um, here, what I'll do is I'll enable it. Enable bucket rendering, and I will open up the picture viewer. Now this is kind of like bucket rendering. If you really want that, so this is this will go through 2,000 iterations on that one bucket, right? And then go through it all. I mean, you can do that if you want to. Uh, that's what bucket rendering does. I guess if you really want, you can. Here, here's what we'll do. We'll turn down the AA samples to like two. Else the bucket width to 256, 256, and then we'll turn down the sample count to about 256. You know what? We'll do that, and I'll show you. Um, that'll just render 200 samples on this one, and then it'll move on to the next one, and then the next one. So, anyway, I'll leave that rendering while we're looking at this. Um, texture size, yeah, it's all the same. It's all the same there. Effects, the only things you can do is tone mapping and remote. I'm not sure what remote does. Tone mapping, you can, um, please select depth option 32 bit channel save time. Yeah, so tone mapping, um, it's to do it. Tone mapping is its own effect. I don't really work with it, so I'm not sure how to use it, but um, that's the only effect you can really use. Tone mapping and um, remote. Anyway, that's pretty much that. So I'm not going to let this thing finish. I'm going gonna, gonna to not let it finish. Okay. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, um, leave a like, subscribe to my channel. It really does help support me. And um, yeah, I hope, you, I hope I helped you guys out here. So 
yeah, I will see you guys later. Goodbye.